being able to be with us, and today we will have a round table of without AMA project rehabilitation and adaptation of ETO veterans to civilian life. Today we will present the position of the Ministry of Social Policy on social adaptation and rehabilitation of servicemen, and also some results of the project that is called Without Arms will be presented, and also we will speak about the interesting initiatives that joined the project. Moreover, we will speak about legislation on psychological rehabilitation of servicemen, and leading, leading psychologists will show several techniques how to rehabilitate and adapt servicemen to peaceful life. Natalia Zakrievska, deputy head on ATO, um, uh, warriors rehabilitation, and so our colleagues will join us. Alexander Evansiv, ch uh, chief lawyer of the project, deputy head of the NGO Studena, Anastasia Milnichenko, director of NGO Studena project organizer and co coordinator of the project without armor, and a very analytic uh, and uh, uh, the deputy head of uh, ATO servicemen organization, Talia, uh, practical psychologist and Talia Arlewska, and also uh, Marina Vilik, cognitive and behavioral psychotherapist, member of the Ukrainian Union of Psychotherapists. We have an hour, so please adhere to timing of uh, five minutes per person, and uh, please speak slowly and clearly. We can start now. Aksana, let's start with the legislation of Ukraine on ATO servicemen. What are the drawbacks about the um, draft law itself? Good afternoon. I would like to tell you several words about those legislation problems that exist at the moment. Our system of rehabilitation is rather outdated and do not correspond to national standards. Firstly, it do not correspond to the international standards because our legislation didn't introduce some important uh, changes, an introduction of uh, international standards on the disabled and those people who require rehabilitation. Our law on rehabilitation of the disabled is outdated. And uh, there are many collisions and problems because of this. The functions of rehabilitation of ATO servicemen are divided between two ministries. This is uh, the Ministry of Social Policy and the Ministry of Health. And uh, they double their activity and uh, do not coordinate their activities properly. And here a problem arises. Also, there is also a question of resort facilities. Here in Ukraine, we understand the rehabilitation as a resort rehabilitation because rehabilitation should have several levels and it shouldn't be reduced only to uh, resorts. At the moment, uh, in Verkhovna Rada, a draft law is registered. Uh, this is the uh, draft law 4458. Uh, it's on rehabilitation, and uh, it has a number of drawbacks, and also there are some positive sides of this draft law. One of the drawbacks is that it is created on the basis of the outdated legislation and the many uh, definitions and approaches that were in the old law, they are preserved. So today we are working at our proposals to this draft law 4458 on the prevention of uh, uh, disability and rehabilitation and 
Also, it will include the rehabilitation of those servicemen who served in ATO. And also, we work on the draft law that is directly related to psychological rehabilitation and adaptation of ATO participants and persons who were in the ATO area and suffered because of this. And this draft law will be based on important recommendations by uh, World Health Organization, and it will be used. The approach of multidisciplinary teams to provide rehabilitation to those persons, and also that is of importance, different level of psychological help starting from basic level that should be provided to everyone, and second and third levels that are the most important in difficult cases. So that, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Oksana. Now we go to the project without armor, and I give the floor to Anastasia Milichenko. So this platform works starting from the 1st of March, and I would like to tell you, uh, ask you about results of the work and what is the further fate of this project. Good afternoon. Firstly, I would like to make an introduction and what was the aim of this project. So there were two aims. First, to increase psychological culture of population, and secondly, to overcome stigmatization of those servicemen who suffered um, because of the ATO. So we have low level of uh, requests for psychological service uh, from ATO participants, so we carried out survey in December for our internal use in order to understand our audience, and only 14% addressed psychotherapists, only 13%, so this is really low. And from these 14%, 61% addressed because they were forced, not voluntarily. That's why our task was through the help of those people who took part in the military actions in the ATO area, and we respect these people a lot, and they are respected among their countrymen, and they should provide information that, uh, that uh, people should address to psychologists. And uh, secondly, we should increase psychological culture, and we conducted some events. We spoke about psychological trauma, about some practices, how to rehabilitate and adapt to peaceful life. And we carried out this campaign, and we understood that we should have the basis for this initiative where a person can address and where he or she can find a specialist. So in five months, we gathered information about the initiatives here in Ukraine that provide free assistance to ATO participants. So this is legal, psychological, social, and any other help that is provided. It should be provided for free. It should be of quality and professional. We analyzed, we gathered data, and as of today, we have 580 initiatives that meet these requirements and they are introduced in the database on our site. And there are all contact data. So visiting our site from any settlement, you can find the closest initiative and to address for help, not searching the internet, just to find it locally. So. These 518 initiatives from many regions of Ukraine, so all Ukraine is covered. Of course, there are more initiatives of big cities than in small towns, about 15 Kiev, and for example, several small initiatives in small cities, but any person can find help. We conducted a survey at the end of the project as to requests of people and their 
appointments with psychotherapists, and uh, I was impressed by results. So in December we had 14 percent, and now we have 33 percent who addressed for psychological help. Of course, this is not only due to our project. There are many NGOs who joined this campaign. And it inspired people to address ecologists. And if we continue, we will reach good results in this area of addressing psychologists by ETO participants. So the project continues, and any initiative can join on our site, site bezbraniv.net, and also we cooperate with the veteran organization. There will be a moderator who will verify what initiatives are on the way. Also, we continue the work on the draft law, so everything will be okay. Thank you. Thank you, Anastasia, and uh, now, about the initiatives in more detail. Maybe something interesting is on the way, some new project. So uh, uh, our next speaker, Anton Columbet, the analyst of the project. So I'm one of the uh, analysts who are responsible for the site and information contained on it. So as um, civil society of Ukraine support our countrymen at the front line, 90% of support by our um, uh, counterparts, they are provided with help by, with help by civil society. So the initiatives we added, so volunteer groups, charitable organizations, veteran associations throughout Ukraine also unite and they are involved in social adaptation of ATO participants when they come home to peaceful life. So the state has bigger resources that can provide the most specific and systemic approach. That's why issues are not resolved without state. But if we are speaking about the most interesting and active initiatives, so they appear in civil organizations. There are many of them, and half a year of work we faced different things that do not have analogs in the work in the world, and these can be uh, hypotherapy when people are rehabilitated uh, through the uh, interaction with horses or some excursions uh, or through some different martial arts, some sports, and uh, they have free access to this. And in any place of uh, Ukraine, people are united with the single idea to help people. and. Uh, some schools of Eng uh, English language or some driving schools, they have some ideas to help the guys to adapt. And they uh, present their services, and uh, the site will help the guys to find those places. And this is very important, not uh, because, for example, you can go to local museum with your child. It is um, of importance, but these small events gives um, something new to a person who gave his uh, all his efforts to the state and people, the servicemen, they see that people support them and this is very pleasant to servicemen that they are valued. And I would like to thank for, on behalf of our guys to those people who spend their time and effort in order to help veterans of ATO. Believe me, we are really grateful to you. Sometimes our guys cannot communicate this properly, but you know that we, we are really grateful to people, to all our Ukraine and to Anastasia Melnichenko that she helped to gather us because this is a great problem. Uh,
caused a big problem for the guys. There was no resource where they could come and find all the spectrum of the, of the required required services. For example, if there is psychological rehabilitation, the wife of the fighter is calling. She's just calling and says that my husband has a very bad psychological condition. He needs help. And she heard that a lot of people are dealing with that in Ukraine because she, she saw it on TV in the newspaper. But where she should call, where she should go, she didn't know. That's why this, the website Bezbrani solved this problem. And we are going to we are going to f to feel to feel it with information. We will consider new initiatives if they will be efficient. We will add them as well. Thank you, Anton. One more speaker joined us. Natalia, good day to you. Natalia Zretska joined us. She is practical psychology trainer. Let's define our position and activity of the ministry for today on this issue. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank you for the invitation because this project is the best and most efficient way to show the possibility of co cooperative of fruitful cooperation between those who provide services those who need them and those who need to coordinate them from the side of the state also i would like to tell you about my attitude to the project as for me the, this kind of projects are very efficient and very useful not from not just from the point of view of concrete results the very important point here is that this project wo, uh, was initiated by the civil society it uh, it joins the specialists and it is very good way to show the potential of our nation to self-organization to self-provision and strategically, on my point of view, it's very important because we understand we need we need to change the, the architecture of uh, state building in the health in other as aspects because how it was during Soviet Union when specialists in this area went to the state bodies. And then they publish orders obligatory for everybody. But we understand that in contemporary world, other model is efficient. The model when the specialists themselves make the system of standards, make requirements to those who should provide the services, and the functions of the state bodies provide official status to these processes. About the issues of psychological rehabilitation, It is a new for, Ukra uh, for Ukraine from the point of view of uh, state governance. There are advantages and disadvantages of this because when there was a need, specialists could organize themselves and they made powerful structure of volunteers who are self-organized specialists who started giving this help required, uh, required by people. But disadvantage is contemporary system of state governance, we are talking about the second half of 2014 and 2015. It wasn't funded enough to give prof professional and quick state management in this sphere. That's why now we have situation with specialists who give services separately and uh, state funds are separately. There is a problem. We understand we should work on it. Talking about figures in 2015, According to the program of psychological rehabilitation, 4,800 participants of ATO got help, but we understand very well that number indicators are not enough because uh, numbers are very different from the quality of the, of the services provided. 
and he and here we are based on the aspect from where I started on the level of the countries integral rehabilitation field should be formed with we are talking about psychological rehabilitation it is help but from other point of view it's psychological service the service of psychological rehabilitation as well and when we are talking about psychological rehabilitation of of ATO participants in big number of cases psychological rehabilitation is not reliable from the Minister of Health without therapy. We are talking about sphere of psychological services that should be provided by some categories of the population. First of all, there are, there are ATO participants due to state funds. That's why one of the most urgent challenges we have and our country, country has Ministry of Social Policy and veteran and ATO fighters department has these are bodies that are collecting decisions and controls the execution. It is a system of, psycho of uh, psychological service rendering and the quality control. This system won't be effective if if specialists won't be involved into it and if it won't be very effective feedback back control from the people who, who need these services first of all we are talking about ATO participants and one more time I want I want to point out that that project similar to this one on our opinion are very important and very effective not just from the provision uh, just for the provision of psychological services on country level thank you very much natalia and now we can go to interactive part of our discussion today there are two specialists with us who are working with militaries directly we will start from natalia orlovska good day natalia you have mic right I think now Natalia will will give us the details. Thank you. Good day, dear colleagues, dear friends, everybody who everybody who are with us today, because the question we are discussing are rather important, and I'm nervous to some grade because it's very sensitive, very vulnerable topic. Ever, uh, everything concerning rehabilitation of the military because it is the life. It is the life of the person directly. It is the life of the families. It is the life of those veteran is talk is talking to it. It is the life of the country. Maybe you saw the glass of water that I'm holding. Why I'm, why I do it? because I've heard such an opinion some time ago and now I want to share it with you that in one audience the tutor was talk was telling students how to fight the stress now it's very actual because because there are single stresses that happen all the time and during these discussions she came to her table and took a glass of water and maybe everybody knows already what we are showing with the glass is it half empty or half full and students saw the same but the tutor asked them what is the weight of one glass filled with water and there were different answer from 220 grams but the tutor told that the weight is not important The, import, the importance is in, in how much time I will hold this glass. If I could hold it just for a few minutes, it's nothing. For a few hours, uh, my hand will hurt. If I'll do it for a day, my hand will be paralyzed. 
If you make analogs of stressful situation with a glass of water, I'm talking about the consequences of the psychological situations. I can tell you that if the sufferings we have, if we are, if, if we are thinking about them, if we, uh, if we live them through, we can live then. If we are going, if we walk during the day and we have some, some pain or some other problems, and if we just hold these psychological problems inside, we just stop doing the way we want to do it. We are paralyzed. There is a lack of actions, and because of that, we have a lot of serious psychological consequences of the war, of stresses of combat stress because now we are talking about uh, our fighters how it can be expressed people become tense emotionally people can't control the emotions sometimes they lose they lose sense in life sometimes they lose the feeling of what to do next all that is accumulating and something needs to be done because they need to live further. So I would like to focus on this issue. I believe that psychology of war and rehabilitation of the military actions participants, there are it should be considered from both ends. We, have, as civilians, we should understand what is going on with the person. But a person who was there, who he, he should understand himself and what is going on with him. And why there are some misunderstandings of civi civilian situations and why civilians do not understand the participants of military actions. There are many specialists who work in, on this and there is a lot of, there are a lot of materials on this and there are many different approaches. None of the approaches you uh, really uh, fits all cases, so we should identify the approach to each person. A person, I mean, why misunderstanding appear? When a person was in the military actions, he lived it through according to some psychological rules, and they were aimed to survive, to carry out duties. And these rules, they got ingrained in subconscious of the person. And we, when people come here, So a person has a special military experience and a person should be able to transform this experience and use it in a normal everyday life. So a serviceman who took part in military actions and he carried out duties and he had to scan the territory understand the situation, and then a person comes to civilian life, and we cannot understand why a person, for example, stopped or he interrupted his speech and what to do. So people, they get used to orders. They do not discuss the matters. The orders are not discussed, and when they are in civilian life, there are a lot of things to be discussed, to understand, and all these issues of psychology, we should work on them with these people, and 
As to the feelings of these people, it was said that my colleagues, they are not ready to express their emotions because they closed their emotions there. They needed good sight, good hearing, but they closed their emotions. And when a person returns to peaceful life, they ask, why are you like that? Why do you keep silence? We should understand the problems to find understanding to carry out rehabilitation, adaptation, and to make it to the benefit of everyone. From my experience, I can say that the process of rehabilitation can be subdivided in several factors. Some of them are external, some of them are internal, X to external factors. These are social factors. Macro social and the mini uh, social factors. Macro concerns the state, community, so this is our attitude towards the person who took part in military actions. I would say that not always we like the actions of the person, but we should have elaborate respect to the actions that uh, the, uh, to that person, because this is a defendant of our state. Of course, we can say it individually, but the general approach should exist. And as to micro-social factor, so this is family, place of employment, maybe some things of everyday life, so we should raise these issues, we should discuss them. And one more thing I would like to focus. I'm sorry, but can you speak about the practices? I would like to say we need to take into account that during rehabilitation we should have time for rehabilitation because let's show a technique, as Alexandra said. So we will know that there is a technique, but we need time and we should just use it. We should understand that we should share this experience, we should understand the experience of the participant and the person reacts like this and then the, the issue arises what to do with it. And at the end, I would like to quote the factors that improve rehabilitation this is ability to self-control, integration of experience, and social support. And going back to the glass of water we were speaking at the beginning, I would like to say that we always have the choice when we should put this glass and for how long we are going to bring this on in our soul and those stress situations that happen to us. So this is our own choice. And they asked to demonstrate some sort of technique. But there are many, many such practices, such techniques. Of course, I can show, but I just confused now. I like training work. We should gather in a circle, for example, and try to carry out exercises, breathing exercises. When we spoke with organizers, they uh, asked about stress. 
a shock situation. What should be the help in such a situation? Тоді вже не практично, а просто теоретично кажу, про, про там, кілька хвилин про, бо, про а, вихід зі стану бойового шоку, добре? Так, я просто хочу сказати, що, ну, я... I was preparing myself towards this. If you want, you can come to Without Arms organization. We can organize it, and this is a good training as to shock situation. This is firstly self-help, what we can do in the situation when we are in stress. So shock reaction to stress. We'll start with the... So first is, there is a shock, such a stage. So this can be a matter of second, several seconds, second, several minutes, but the shock stage is always present. What should be done at this moment? Firstly, you should breathe. So we have such a resource, natural resource, and we should use it. We can regulate it. Briefing to calm yourself down. You should breathe in a special way. And then, secondly, three criteria, three stages, three levels of self-help. So breathe, uh, then I breathe. Then you should look around. You should get understanding of the situation. You should look at the picture, for example, and describe a picture that you see. So about the colors, so this is a moment you should just get distracted. And then the body. You should understand what is going on with your body, whether you can walk or not. So this is briefly about this matter. Thank you, Natalia. If you have questions, please, I'm ready to answer. So we will have several minutes later of records we will be able to speak. And at the end, uh, the interesting practice that is called mindf mindfulness therapy. Marina Bilek, please welcome. So tell me about the time limit, 20 minutes, thank you. I'm very grateful to Oksana that she highlighted the matter of stress and told us about this, why stress accumulated. And I would like to tell you about it, what stress means and how we can overcome it. So this is a part of my presentation. So many people say that many diseases are because of nerves or because of stress and people are triggered by some situations and express some reaction towards it. Позиция слегка очень так по поверхам. То есть у нас есть в отличие от животных, да, эволюционное преимущество. So we have evolutionary benefit. So this is a core of our brain. So this is a schematic this lim limbic part, so this is the um, core of the brain, and we have two ways, two roots. We have two ways, um, and the impulses come from outside, so... So, uh, we see, for example, a snake, and we see a threat, and this stimulus can come to the special part of the brain that uh, ref um, sees the threat. So this is the part of our ancient brain. So what is the specificity? So it doesn't discriminate the threat. So better safe than sorry, it says to us. And it sees the threat to life and provides the hormones and then um, to, uh, it goes, uh, these hormones go to our brain and we get emotions 
uh, when we see some threat. So we have some emotions of fear, some disturbance. And when we have these emotions, all the systems are connected, and the hormonal system starts to release hormone, uh, adrenaline and cortisol. And then there is a second way. And uh, the second way is the upper way. We have a core of the brain. This is our evolutionary benefit, and we have such a function as speech. So we can disc uh, discriminate, fant fantasize, we can plan, and uh, when the reaction goes through the score, so we saw something, we saw, for example, a spider. So the and we start discriminating what kind of spider is it dangerous or some harmless spider that, that doesn't bring any harm. And in this case, when we see there is no danger, we, we come down. And it looks in this way. There is a trigger. There is some sound in the grass. And we think that it might, it might it is a danger. It might be a snake emotional reaction then, then activation of sympathetic nervous system and physiological mobilization. What we do when, when we are afraid? We run from... We have three reactions. Our selection is not that huge. You can run, you can attack, or you can forget. Or, for example, we can see a tiger or some real danger. And we are thinking what to do, to run or to attack. And to realize these reactions at the same time, because there is a huge burst of hormones that, uh, that time, our body reaction is to execute it, this running. Our big muscle need to pump the blood. Correspondingly, the heart will start pumping this blood into the brain. We will have heartbeat. Our big muscles will be under pressure, correspondingly to, to give the body the possibility to, to deal with it, we, we start sweating because the big muscles start shaking because there is a big pressure. to have enough energy for this running and all other systems that we don't need this time. For example, the tiger is running. His victim can see it. And of course, this monkey or something else won't think about food or about sex. It will, this system will be switched off. So we might feel now, now say we might feel some pain in the stomach, so on and so forth. And our focus is to say, to save ourselves. And then there's behavior reaction to run and to evaluate from the safe distance and evaluation of the situation as it is and what happens. And after that, we come down when we see it's not danger. That's how our alarm system works. We need to understand its evolution mechanism. It, wa it was made during millions of years. Thanks to this mechanism, we are here today alive. In long perspective, um, such a reaction, and why do we have this high level of stress among the people who were in ATO area, among volunteers the same? In our everyday life, because yes, we have this reaction. Yes, we are tense all the time. And correspondingly, stress hormones come to our body all the time. And there is increased activity of the muscle system, and there can be, and in long period, it might break the work of the mechanism. That's how the cycle of alarm reaction looks like. We have some thoughts, we perceive there is a threat, something, uh, something terrible can happen, and we need to understand that our evolutional advantage is against us here because there are some direct threats for example snake for example and we react oh but also there is a course that can think about the future threats 
we all know right when we are in the bed we know that we need to go to the work tomorrow and we are trying to sleep but this uh, but you can't because you keep sinking 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 please uh, raise your hands who know what i'm talking about yes and we don't understand what to do we need to sleep but we can't and stress is more and more we know all that but in our peaceful life there are no situation when dinosaur or tiger can attack us they are not realistic but still our core is trying to pre to prevent this potential threats and we think 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 all the time this process never stops and there is this stress in the body all the uh, hormones come and when tiger attacks we will run we can jump to five meters fence or something like that but when we don't have some real threat what to do with it these hormones will stay in the body and they give us stress and tense of all our system emotion is panic and behavior is different control uh, avoidance planning more and more it fixes the cycle and then there is the uh, this is tiresome some personal relationship finance suffer from it as uh, impossibility to relax and here is, uh, there is such a nice uh, picture i like it very much it is a resp stress response uh, from the fish when it is uh, when there is attack from from shark of course it's clear that z uh, that the fish will run and other one is a stress just from the suit what if the big bad fish comes out today and that's how our hormones work there are in uh, scientific investigation showing there are different regimes we can uh, we can come into this regime now will for example run stay anger panic adrenaline cortisol action regime there is something that inspires us and also there is alpha regime when we f when we feel the calm satisfaction safety and we have other hormones endorphins and other joy hormones we all know that when we feel ourselves good and the mindful therapy now everything goes to different different kinds uh, kinds of the help psycho psychological help are proposed and scientific world is trying to make uh, to make z uh, them short term they want them to help quickly and there are a lot of investigations of the waves how to do, how to treat this or that stress and there is oxford center of the behavior therapy and they develop different kind of protocols what they are talking about they made investigation they took old equipment it's it's a buddhist meditation they st they started investigating its influence to the brain and they make this investigation for 30 years already and it was proved that people who exercise uh, meditation or mindfulness as they call it because mindfulness it is a scientifically proved meditation without religious uh, religious context it is a techniques techniques available for everybody and they understood that the brain and these processes is an electrical activity that goes through the core with neuron connections that suppress unnecessary information some sufferings body reactions so by practicing that pe person could go into the state of of rest relax satisfaction and there are different kind of kinds of meditation Oksana told for the body for the um, for the body for the breath different kinds of them 
At National Institute of Health Protection of UK recommended the program of uh, mindfulness based uh, com behavior therapy is one of the most efficient ways to treat depression. Also, they prove the efficiency of the program of the program on prevention and nerve pain syndrome, so on and so forth. I work as cognitive behavior therapy. Thera and my work is investigation of the person, differential diagnosis. I we work with this diagnosis with the protocol, and in this protocol, 70% of disturbance um, are this local mindfulness because it increases the stability and helps the person to to deal with many of his concern and here is the evolutional advantage of the person and animals first challenge of evolution was to give us the language to give us the advantages to live to plan to think to talk to each other and what happens now what are the challenge and here you can see the person and the dog go on the stroll and the, the dog doesn't have мысленные жвачки, то она идет, она просто наслаждается краевидом, она видит травку, солнышко, то, знаете, ей просто хорошо. And the dog, it doesn't have the course, the dog doesn't have this constant thinking person, the dog just sees the trees, the grass, the sun, and it enjoys, and how we walk, if we go to the, for the stroll, and we want to relax, but there is a constant thinking process in the brain. And the second challenge of evolution is to get to know how to regulate it, how to stop this, this, um, this flow of the thoughts. Why it is important? Because when we were kids and we couldn't talk, we didn't have all the states. You know, it's very resource conditioned now, now and here. We knew how to do it, but after that we lost it. And what Buddhists tell us, and what we understand as people, what do we have? We don't have uh, the past. Uh, do we have the future? Nobody knows. We have just today. And what we can uh, teach with the help of this practice, not to miss our own life, not to live in the past, not to live in the future, not to live in constant stress, in the thoughts, just to live here and now. Maybe we might get relaxed from the, from this constant flow of thoughts, just just to live, just to live as a kid, just to feel this life here and now. Marina, I'm sorry, there are just a few minutes left. Maybe you can tell us briefly about the main things, how exactly we can relax, how we can go from our thoughts. Thank you very much for reminding about time. So we are growing new neuron connections. We reinforce frontal cores that helps us to uh, to switch on the uh, the central parts of the brain. And here there are benefits of meditation. It helps reducing uh, uh, pain syndrome. It reduced uh, blood pressure. Also there is balance. Bel uh, balance it reduces the feeling of depression and really this is a this is the case when it's better to do than to talk so there is a task for all of you i would like to propose you a small practice i understand that maybe the atmosphere is not the most appropriate now but i ask those who can who want close their eyes and just to find some point in some point in, uh, on the ceiling, on the floor. And let's try for a few minutes to make this practice. Thank you very much. And now please try concentrate on your breath. Look at look at the end of your nose for the beginning and put your attention how the breath comes into your nostrils, how it goes or how it goes deeper into your body. 
don't change your breath don't try to adapt your breath just monitor just look at it point your attention on the way you breathe breathe in breathe out feel how the air goes below to diaphragm then it goes up again again breathe in breathe out and see and then you thought uh, just try to see the way the air goes through your body in out And you can see that this is the moment you start thinking about something. Thoughts are coming to your brain. That's normal. It's very typical for us humans. Always we can see that how brain lives its own life. There are some activities inside. If you have some thought in your head, just, just notice it. Don't judge yourself for it. Don't punish yourself. Just put the thought into the cloud and let let her fly. And you put your attention again to breathe in, breathe out. And please see how the breath goes through the, your nose, through your through your breath, through your airways. How it goes back. breathe in breathe out and now please check please look at the at the um, thumb of your left leg think about the f sensations in this thumb maybe the it's it's in heat it's cold maybe there are no sensation at all in your in the thumb of your left leg. That's normal. We just fix what happens to our body. Do we, did we notice at all that we have toys on our left leg? Now we look at this at this thumb by our internal eyes and try to imagine how air comes to your body and goes slower to the thumb of your left leg and after that air goes back imagine that the air goes through all your body breathe in breathe out And now, now think about the sensation of your ankle. Do you have any sensations there? If there are no, just look at it. Just imagine how air goes through your ankle. Breathe in, breathe out. And after your internal eyes are, go are going up to your on the leg and you just look positively to your body what it happens to it you just allow your body to live as it lives and again put attention to your breath Please follow the ways the air comes in and comes out. When you are ready, those who close their eyes, open your eyes, come back to us, to this room. Thank you very much. Of course, there are limitations connected to the time, to the place, because you need time for this practice. You need to do it at least for five, for seven minutes to feel it, to give the possibility to a body to go into this alpha rhythm. But in general, maybe some of you 
uh, can give me feedback or wants to tell something, you're welcome to do it. Did you succeed, didn't you? I think our audience is just so like they can't do it at the moment. And at the end, if somebody is interested, there is a, there is a literature, there is a serial. Um, I'm at I'm I'm the therapist for myself, and the guidance how to help yourself if you have depression, stress, al alarm, or some other troubles. And a lot of other good books that can teach you meditate. And our aim as therapeut to give the people these skills, these box with tools. And we want the person to take these box with tools into his normal life and use them at home. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. Thank you very much, Marina. We finish our briefing. Thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions or you want to talk personally to, to the speakers, we invite you to the coffee shop on the ground floor when we can continue our discussion in, in informal atmosphere. Thank you very much for your attention.